hello youtube welcome to this channel again today we will talk about a true story that happened in korea so let's begin hope you like it your emergency we may all have heard about North Korea and the rules that are applied to its citizens in this country a person wanting to leave the country can be punished with a death sentence the daily NK is the newspaper created by North Korean refugees in South Korea it often talks about executions and punishments done to citizens in the country. In Japan, in Mikata, a city on the coast of Japan, on the night of November 15, 1977, a group of teenagers were leaving their badminton training. A girl named Yokota Megumi is part of this group of friends. At that time, Megumi was only 13 years old. When she was separated from her group of friends, she had to walk 7 minutes to reach home. But she never arrives at home. Megumi was born on October 5, 1964 in Niigata, Japan. Niigata is the coastal city of Japan which contains a very large port. The Yokota family lives there. It is a wealthy family because the father of the family named Shigoro is a banker. The father and the mother of Megumi give birth to two twins four years after the birth of Megumi, who are called Takuya and Tetsuya. Megumi seems to take good care of her brothers. She is an enthusiastic girl who smiles all the time. Megumi lives a happy and normal childhood. She is a girl who studies well and participates in many extracurricular activities such as badminton. Let's talk about the day of November 15, 1977. Megumi participates in badminton training after school. The Yokotas at that time lives in the north of Niigata, in a nice little villa overlooking the sea. It's 7 p.m. and Niigata's mother is preparing the dinner, but she starts to be worried because Niigata usually finishes around 6 p.m especially since her college is not very far from their house, so there is no reason for her to take a detour that far to arrive an hour later. The mother, worried, left for school hoping to meet her daughter on the way, but she didn't meet anyone except the school janitor who told her that everyone had already left since 6 p.m. Her mother and the whole family then imagined different scenarios. She could run away or be kidnapped or have an accident. The family then notifies the authorities who immediately work on the case. They used dogs and searched the area around the port, the school and the way she would have taken. The police think that she is run away. The family on the other hand contradicts the police because according to them, Megumi has no reason to run away. Nevertheless, there are rumors about this small town of Negata. Some inhabitants talk about strange lights coming from unknown ships and radar signals. Others say they have seen completely dry Korean cigarettes back on the beach. On August 13, 1978, Rumiko, Masumoto, and her boyfriend named Suichi parked their car further away and decided to walk on the beach. At about 7 p.m., Rumiko still hasn't come home. 
Her parents decide to alert the police and the latter immediately get active. The police found the couple's car and notice that their belongings such as the leaves and the sunglasses were still inside. Police also found a camera containing the couple's photo with the current date. While investigating more on the side of the beach, it then finds a sandal which seems to belong to the boy. In the 80s, a journalist made the link between the disappearance of the couple during the year 1978 and a possible kidnapping by North Korean agents. On January 7, 1980, he published this article in the newspaper Shanghai Shibun. This article speaks about an abduction of several couples on the coast of Niigata, Fukui, and Kagoshima. A few years later, a former spy of North Korea comes out of silence. The spy, destined for a very special missions of the North Korea regime, Kim Yong hui placed the bomb that blew up a South Korean plane in flight on November 29, 1987. She killed 115 people in the attack. She was later sentenced in Seoul and revealed her identity and mission. She says she learned Japanese to be able to work well undercover. She also reveals that her teacher is a Japanese woman. She says she lived with this teacher for almost two years. In spite of the testimonies, it was difficult to recognize that abductions were really made because the North Korean government radically denies the fact. It is said that Megumi's kidnapping was not planned according to Ahn Meyong Jin's testimony. Korean spies waiting for a pickup boat so that they were spotted. They then captured the person who was none other than Megumi. The agents who took her were reprimanded because Megumi is too young and she is of no use. The trip to North Korea took 40 hours. When she arrived at her destination, Megumi was forced to work by training young Koreans to pass as a Japanese and to learn the Korean language. In 1986, Megumi married South Korean Kim Young-nam, who was also kidnapped, and the couple had a daughter in 1987 Kim Hye Kyung. She lived with a girl named Hitomi Soga for about two years. The girl said that Megumi is obsessed with her family and her little brothers. She talked about them all the time. She worked hard because the North Korean government promised her a return to Japan if she worked well. In 1997, a journalist suddenly told Megumi's family that Megumi was alive. Her parents were astonished and the cherry on the cake was that it was a secretary of a Japanese deputy who taught them. Her permissions were always refused, which caused her to become very depressed. She is then interned in a psychiatric hospital. The Korean government said that only 13 Japanese were abducted while Japan insisted on the number 17. The Korean authorities then said that 8 of the 13 were dead and that the bodies could not be returned to the family because their graves were destroyed by the flood. It is only in 2005 that 5 of the 17 Japanese kidnapped visit Japan. Their trip was to last 10 days but they never returned to Korea. Unfortunately, Megumi was not among the 5 visitors. This is a very bad news for the Yokota family. It is then said that Megumi would have committed suicide during the 13 March 1994. But in June 2012, Choi Seong Ryong, head of a support group for relatives of South Koreans abducted by the North, said 
He had contained documents from the North Korean government that Megumi had died of depression on December 14, 2004. Many people generally believe, especially in Japan, that Yokota is still alive. In November 2011, the South Korean magazine weekly Cho Zun stated that a woman named Kim Eun Kong, with the same birth date as Megumi, was listed in a 2005 directory of Pyongyang residents. The directory lists Kim's spouse as Kim Yong Nam. Sources later indicate that Kim Yong Kong was in fact Yokota's 24-year-old daughter. In August 2012, Choi Seung Ryong states that sources in North Korea reported to him that Kim Yong Kong had been placed under the supervision of Kim Yo Jong, Kim Jong Un's sister, and that the North Korean government might be planning to use Okota's daughter as a card in future negotiations with Japan. In March 2014, Megumi, Yokota's parents met their granddaughter Kim Eun Kyung for the first time in Mongolia, as well as her own daughter whose father is not identified. Megumi Yokota's story has touched Japanese society and she has become a symbol. In Syria, an artist even dedicated a work to her. What do you think about this story? Tell me in the comment your idea about it. So this is the end of the video, I hope you liked it. And tell me in the comment what you think about it. So I'll see you next week for a new video. Goodbye.